Good morning, everyone. This is Julie McDonald with Microcom Technologies, and I'd like to thank all of you for attending today's webinar with Ingenious. Today's host is Brian Slayman. He is their product manager. He'll be presenting today, and if anyone has any questions, please feel free to to me in the question box, and Brian will answer them at the end of today's presentation. Thank you so much, Brian, for being with us today. We appreciate your time. And we are looking forward to your presentation. It, the floor is now yours. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Microcom, for uh, hosting this webinar. And thanks for everybody joining today. <clears throat> Again, my name is Brian Slayman. I'm a product line manager for Ingenious Technologies. What we're discussing today, or what we're talking about today, is our network uh, solution overview. What I'll cover within this uh, presentation is our industries that we serve. Uh, network management and hardware selection. So we'll talk about multiple things and hopefully give you a, a clear idea of what we offer to the market today. <clears throat> In regards to the industry that we serve, uh, Ingenious the Sweet Spot is really in the small, medium-sized business space. Uh, specifically in the hospitality, healthcare, education, multi-dwelling units and professional audio video um, uh, verticals. Specifically, uh, small, medium-sized type businesses, such as in the hospitality, we do really well, our products do really well in resorts, hotels, marinas, and campgrounds. Uh, to give you an example, we've done a lot of projects with Comfort Inn, we've done a lot of projects with um, Motel 8, Motel 6, so small to medium-sized type hotels. In addition to that, we, we've done very well in the healthcare market, specifically in the assisted living. And we've, uh, we, we do a couple things for the assisted living um, vertical or um, for the businesses um, with our phone systems and our networking systems. Uh, so assisted living and residential care are probably the biggest two. And obviously we do a lot of small professional offices like doctor offices, dental offices, and so on. In addition to that, uh, in the education space, again, keep in mind small, medium-sized type schools such as K-12, private schools, and uh, community colleges or campuses. Uh, we've done a ton of private schools in the past, and we continue to do uh, private schools where our product does very well within these uh, particular applications. Multi-dwelling units is a newer one for us. We've been doing multi-dwelling uh, units, but it's starting to grow dramatically. We've done a lot of apartment complexes, a lot of condos. We're starting to do more and more student housing. Um, in the student housing market, we're doing a lot of switching. A lot of, our, um, a lot of the system integrators or managed service providers that work within the um, MDU space use our products for stu student housing, um, specifically on the switching side, our eight port and our 24 port switches. Um, in the pro-AV market, uh, mainly mid-sized homes or luxury homes, we do dabble into commercial size um, applications, but there's a lot of pro AV installers in there in that industry that use our products to basically create um, a smart network within a home, a luxury home or a mid-sized home, uh, specifically the Wi-Fi back, backbone that is um, supporting all the IoT devices uh, within a home today. Um, and that's a, a big market of ours uh, also. So these are the areas where you can win more business. These are the industries that we uh, do really well in. To go into, uh, to offer up case studies, we have several case studies in all these industries. Um, I'll talk about three main ones. In the hospitality market, we're working with a managed service provider that is managing over 300 hotels um, and over 1,600 devices, uh, those devices are both wired and wireless networking devices, and they do that over 300 different hotels. This particular managed service provider only, uh, their employee or their business size, not business size, but their company size is uh, about 10 employees. So they're able to manage all 300 sites, uh, manage all these devices with uh, only 10 employees. In the multi-dwelling unit, in this case study, you can find on ingeniustech.com if, uh, if you would like to uh, look that up. Uh, another case study is, or a success story, is one with multi-dwelling units. We work with a managed service provider that supports 70 luxury uh, condominiums in a 15-story building with voice communications. Uh, they use both our te uh, telephony gear and also our networking gear 
and um, they've had great success in multi-dwelling units um, or in this particular uh, scenario. Another area is healthcare. We've done a ton of assisted living, residential care, um, specifically with managed service providers, implementing network for uh, telemedicine, um, for applications, uh, anywhere from a 30 bed application all the way up to uh, a 500 bed application. But this in particular is a 280 bed assisted living uh, facilities in New Jersey. And there's also a case study that talks about this particular case too. So we've had multiple uh, success stories uh, that we um, are actually sharing on our website uh, that support all the industries that I just discussed in the last slide. So let's talk about the network management solution uh, that goes into these different industries, the hospitality market, the healthcare market, the MDU space, uh, the per-AV space. So network device management. Ingenius's management solution, uh, we like to say, is very flexible, scalable, and affordable. There's really three main components to this management solution. There is our layer two switches, which we'll talk about. There are our indoor and outdoor access points. And then there's a third component, which is our uh, network management software called EasyMaster. And EasyMaster is a software that is downloadable from our site that can um, reside in a private server, a uh, semi-private server, or a cloud-based service like AWS, for example. So let's talk about the flexibility of the product. So in regards to our switches and our access points, all of these devices work in a autonomous mode or in a standalone mode, meaning I can go into the device, configure the device, um, install the device, and it's functional and working. Um, I can also install uh, the device in a way where it can be managed from one of our switches, anywhere from an eight port all the way up to a 48 port switch. I can do this locally. For example, in my office at Ingenius, I can deploy one of our uh, eight port switches as an example, and I can manage up to 50 access points on that eight port switch. I have visibility of all those access points and all the devices that are connected to those devices or those access points. And I can actually do firmware updates. I can do mass configurations on all 50 of those particular devices. So I can manage these devices locally through our layer two switch. Uh, the other way I can manage these devices is through EasyMaster. EasyMaster allows me to manage not just one site locally, but multiple sites across subnets. So let me give you an example. I can man manage a site in my uh, Orange County office. I can manage another site from my uh, Orange County office in Dallas. I can manage another site in New York. I can manage another site in Chicago. I can manage all those sites. What do I mean by managing those sites? I can actually look at those uh, sites as projects within my system, and I can dive into each of those sites and understand how many access points are within this site, how many switches are within this site, and how many uh, client devices are connected to this, these particular access points, what kind of bandwidth is being used within these access points, uh, what kind of clients. Uh, I, can, I can choose uh, particular clients and understand what kind of bandwidth they're doing. So there's a multiple of things that I can do. And what this really allows you to do is start from a very, very high level and start to granularly uh, go into a reviewing, monitoring, troubleshooting uh, kind of uh, a step process to be able to support the customers at those particular sites. And that's true for EasyMaster. I can do the same locally if I want to with the uh, switch, or I can do it on an individual basis. So I have that capability with this particular product. So it's very, very flexible. I can also offer scalability with this uh, particular network, um, network solution. I can actually start very, very small. I can actually take one access point and I can manage that access point either by a switch or with EasyMaster. I can start very small and I can start to grow. I can go from one access point, I can manage one access point, I can manage two, then five, then 10, then 20, 100, 200, 500, 1,000 plus devices. I used a managed service provider that I work with in Kansas, uh, I believe in Kansas City, that manages 300 different sites and over 1,500, 1,600 devices. 
Um, they actually started at a very, very small, with a small set of hotels that they managed locally. And they slowly grew to up to 300 plus uh, sites with all these devices. So the network solution that we offer is very, very, very scalable. The other factor is the affordability. How do, how do we compare with uh, some of our uh, competitors out there? Um, and how does the managed service provider or the system integrator, how are they able to compete or how are they able to uh, regenerate uh, revenue? And so how we do this is, um, in Genius, uh, we're a true manufacturer. We actually manufacture our own devices. So we have control over the quality. We have control over the different components that we use. We have uh, uh, control over the cost of those components and how it's manufactured. And so we can come to market with a very aggressive price point. And what you're looking at here is a comparison of, a, uh, of our 4x4 Wave 2 access point ceiling mount, which retails for $439. And we compare that with our competitors that are around $1,300 to $1,400. And um, already our hardware cost is at a, a very aggressive price point. With our system, because we can operate with either our layer 2 switches, which is acting somewhat like a controller, and or EasyMaster, which is operating as a private server or a private cloud server, we're a hybrid setup. So we can actually work in a number of different ways depending on the customer. So in a lot of cases, the customer does not need a hardware controller. They do not need subscription fees. They do not need license fees. And we do not charge for firmware upgrades. All this comes at no cost. At the bottom line, this is based off of a 25 access point deployment you're paying for the cost of the access points, but you have no additional cost to, uh, uh, to the bottom line. So your lower TCO is going to be very aggressive uh, within these different industries that I just talked about. In comparison to our competitors where you have to buy a hardware controller, there's licensing fees, there's firmware upgrade fees, there's technical support fees, there's uh, uh, subscription fees where you have to pay $150 per year per access point, for example, or per device that you have to manage. So there's a lot of different fees that you have you're, that you're being charged on top of the hardware cost itself. So this is a very aggressive um, um, strategy that we've started from day one, and we continue to push forward with this particular solution. This. Flexible, scalable, affordable network solution applies to a very comprehensive line of hardware, which I will go through uh, and we'll talk about the different types of har hardware that we offer. You can choose from a very comprehensive, or your customers can choose from a very comprehensive managed hardware line. Uh, you can get solutions for every level of density. It can be a low density application, it can be a moderate uh, density application, it can be a high density application, or it can be for a specific use. And we'll talk about those different things. What I mean by density is client density, the number of devices that you're supporting within the network, such as laptops, smartphones, iPhones, tablets, IoT devices. That's what we're referencing in regards to density. It's client density. So a low count of devices, a moderate count of devices, a high count of devices, or specific uses. So in, in, in the indoor Wi-Fi space, we offer multiple solutions. And I try to break it up into applications. So I call them specialty or high user capacity applications, so such as large conference rooms, lobbies, convention centers, large sales floors, uh, malls, cafeterias, common areas. We have a solution that will handle high capacity. We have solutions that have three radios, which is a tri-band solution. We have solutions that are, and these are all Wave 2, by the way, Wave uh, 11 AC Wave 2 technology is being used. We have a solution that's tri-band, so it's using three radios. We have a solution that is a dual band, but it's operating on, um, it's uh, capable of supporting four by four streams. Uh, so it's a four by four design. So we have an external design and an internal antenna design. 
So for high capacity use, we have something for that. For more specific cases, such as in-room Wi-Fi applications, such as training rooms, classrooms, hotel rooms, uh, suites, apartments, condos, assisted living, uh, residential AV, residential care, and, um, and small offices, uh, we have devices like our wall plate device, which is the EWS 550. This is a wall plate access point. It would be deployed in a hotel room, for example, and it will provide Wi-Fi within the room or next to the room, or uh, two rooms next to it, or so three rooms, for example. Or you can, uh, your customers can deploy a, um, or you can deploy a mesh dot, which plugs into the wall and provides Wi-Fi within the room, and within itself. It's just a smaller form factor. Both of these devices are a wave two product. So something specific as in-room Wi-Fi. Or we have devices that cover uh, moderate capacity or general Wi-Fi applications, such as large homes, business offices, medical offices, small to mid-sized hotels in the, the general areas, um, assisted living, K-12, community college, house of worship, car dealerships, retail shops, and smart homes. And you'll see some overlap. And the reason you see overlap is because in an example for a, a, a hotel, you might have a conference center in the hotel. Well, you're going to use a high capacity device in that convention center of the hotel. But in some of the general areas, you might use a different model. So you'll have a, a hybrid app, a solution for uh, different types of applications. And so this is our indoor Wi-Fi solutions lineup. Outdoor Wi-Fi solutions, uh, we kind of uh, put these in the same or similar categories. So we have high user capacity outdoor Wi-Fi applications. These devices are wave two dual band four by four design type access points. They would fall into convention centers, outdoor malls, hotel pool areas, beachfront properties, community centers, uh, concert venues, and city deployments. By the way, all the applications I'm discussing within these slides are applications that we've actually deployed into. These are not just ideas, but this is where these products have fallen into. Um, in more specific areas like point-to-point -point and point-to-multi-point applications, such as building-to-building -building communication, building-to-multi-building communication, surveillance uh, streaming, we do tons and tons of surveillance, remote gate access and door access, digital signage, POS stations, and communication. The biggest one I would say is surveillance uh, and digital signage, and we do a lot of point-to-point -point communication with these particular devices. Um, as you may or may not know, we have a full line of outdoor products for point-to-point, -point, so we have multiple versions of the point-to-point -point and point-to-multiple -point product that fall in these different areas or applications. The same holds true in the moderate capacity or general outdoor Wi-Fi applications. Again, res residential school or pools, college campuses, outdoor uh, cafes, outdoor community or common areas, where even warehouses, that's more of an indoor space scenario, RV parks, car dealerships, uh, parking garages. And these devices would fall into those categories. And again, you'll find that there's overlap between the high capacity and the moderate capacity um, areas depending on the application uh, in itself. And this is an overview of our outdoor Wi-Fi solutions, and this is how we put these in different categories on basically the application. Okay. Switching. We have a full line of POE switches. Uh, specifically, uh, they're all obviously gigabit POE switches. They're full layer two uh, switches. Anywhere from an eight port all the way up to a 48 port gigabit POE switches. Uh, we, all of our switches have a SFP port on those particular switches. So you have different setups. You'll have two SFP ports or four SFP ports. This particular switch has two gigabit uh, ethernet ports. We just started adding, uh, we just started adding 10 gigabit SFP plus ports. Uh, we have a new 24 port switch that has 10 gigabit up uplink ports. So you'll see more and more switches coming out from us that have 10 gigabit SFP uh, plus ports. Um, 
but we have a whole range of A port all the way up to a 48 port. All of them obviously have different POE budgets, anywhere from a 61 watt all the way up to a 70, uh, 740 watt POE budget. Um, I believe we're the only one in the market to have a 410 watt uh, 48 port and 24 port uh, POE budget on our switches. It's a uh, power supply that uh, we uh, manufacture, so that's why we're the only one to really get out there into, into the space first. It's just offering more power budget for these different types of applications. You do have to know that all of our switches have an onboard wireless LAN controller. Um, all of these switches are priced as a layer two switch, gigabit switch. They're all smart switches. Um, you can log into the interface and you have all the layer two switches and you have the wireless LAN control uh, interface on all of those switches. Um, that is basically coming at no additional cost. Remember, my switch is going to be priced similar or the same as what you would find in the market with like a Netgear switch as an example. So very competitive pricing. <clears throat> I'm just offering this full, uh, free onboard wireless LAN controller, which obviously manages the ingenious access points and other switches. <clears throat> so we do offer that. That's basically um, if I have a customer that's looking for uh, a, a hardware controller, I definitely would sell this switch to them and I would explain, this is my switch. It offers PoE to all the access points that you would deploy. But if I have a customer that's just looking for switches, layer two switches, I'm going to sell them this switch. I'm not gonna talk about the wireless LAN controller. I'll just sell them the switch. And if they happen to see that the, there's a wireless LAN controller on that switch, I will say, yeah, it manages our access points you're more than welcome to use our Wi-Fi access points within a scenario if you have that, if you run into that case. <clears throat> the applications that would apply to the PoE, or PoE applications uh, specifically, PoE, uh, I'm sure everybody is aware of, but PoE, uh, the cases that we run into are powering up, sending data and powering up devices like wireless access points, surveillance cameras, voice over IP, door access, uh, just access control just in general, lighting control. These are the scenarios that we run into for supporting POE applications. Um, in regards to SFP applications, if you're connecting from one switch to another switch, uh, through the SFP ports, you're going from between floors in a hotel. So you're going from like, say for example, from floor one to floor five to floor 10, they're being connected through uh, fiber and this is through the SFP ports or across hotels. If your hotel is across a very large space, you're going to connect through the SFP ports um, or through fiber across a hotel floor, campus buildings as an example business parks, if you're connecting multiple buildings together in a campus area or a business area, uh, uh, in surveillance uh, networks. Uh, my switch might be the switch that's connected to all the cameras in a remote area, and it's running fiber from the SFP port to the core network. That would be another scenario, or just in general, large offices that have multiple floors or very, they're very large in, um, in area. Um, so I'm going across floors within a large office. So these are some of the applications that we typically run into um, for SFP and PoE. And that uh, covers the Ingenious product overview. I, again, I want to thank everybody for joining the webinar and I want to thank Microcom for giving us the time to be able to talk about our product. And what I'll do now is I'll open it up for any questions that you may have. Thank you very much, Brian, for that presentation. We we enjoyed it very much. I do have some questions here for you. Um, first one, you may have answered, um, but I do want to read them all. Uh, first one, um, is remote management free per device? It is. And it's, <laughs> that's, it's a funny question because I should have covered it, and I did not cover that. So since I have control still over the presentation, um, these devices are, uh, it's, I, I kind of did, but I didn't really highlight it. 
there's no subscription fees, there's no licensing fees on any of our devices. So there's no per device subscription fee or AP licensing fees. Basically, when you're using our management system, either it be through the controller itself or the switch, you're not you're paying for the switch. You're not paying for the manageability of the access points. So there's no licensing fees, no subscription fees. Easy Master is our network management software. Your your customer is downloading that uh, server or that software to apply it to a server, and you're not they own that instance of the server and they're able to manage those devices with no additional cost. They just have to maintain the server that the uh, network software is sitting on. Thank you, Brian. Um, next question here. Um, each eight port switch can manage 50 APs, is that correct? That is correct. And that's also a, a great question. So I'll give you an example that is Hopefully it's relatable. So if I'm a system integrator and I walk into a system living and they had Cisco uh, switching devices and access points, for example, and they want to replace the, uh, the access points are legacy, for example, they're 11, a, they're 11 N, for example, uh, they want to refresh the access points. So what they would get, what would happen is they would go in and they would say they're using ingenious. They would put in, 11 AC wave two access points throughout the uh, assisted living facilities, right? But they do not want to change the Cisco switches out whatsoever. So what they can do is they can actually just attach one of our eight port switches into the network. It's going to be my network switch, my eight port network switch, which is connected to the Cisco switches, which are all connected to all the access points that have been placed around the uh, assisted living facilities. My switch will actually manage all of all those access points, and you can manage up to 50 of those access points all through the Cisco switches to my controller. So that's how we expand on the A port. So I'm going from my A port to say maybe uh, another A port to another 24 port to another 48 port. And from all those switches, I have 48 or 50 access points connected to all those different switches, which is coming back to my one A port switch. And now I'm controlling all 50 of those access points. Hopefully that answers that question. Yes, it does. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, next question here. Um, if we have customers looking for installers for the Ingenious product, where can we refer them to? Uh, so, say that one more time, I'm sorry. No, no worries. Um, if we have customers looking for installers for your products, um, what's the best place to refer them to? I would, I would refer them back to their distributor or their value-added distributor, typically. Um, unless we're working with, uh, so in, in regards to, say, for example, Microcom, if Microcom has a customer that is looking for a system integrator, my assumption would be that Microcom would have a list of system integrators that they work with. If Ingenious has a list of, we, I mean, we do have a, a list of system integrators, if they work with a particular distributor and we're working with that particular distributor, we would, we would, um, we would uh, tell them about that system integrator. But if it's a new system integrator that's not working with any distributor, we would, we would pair up Microcom in this case and the system integrator to work with that customer. Does that make sense? Excellent, thank you, yes. Um, next question here. Um, regarding Easy Master, does it have any features to give admin and user rights? Oh, great question. Um, we we actually just made a major update on Easy Master. Actually, on our access points, on our switches, and on Easy Master, which allows you to enable or use a function called multi-tenant. And multi-tenant allows you to create a, administrative rights for particular people, or it allows you to create user rights uh, for particular um, uh, levels of users. So yes, we do have that. Excellent, thank you. A next question: um, Is the Easy Master free of charge? You mentioned this was downloadable, but I'm not sure if it's a paid feature. It is free of charge. 
Uh, so we just had a partner summit, and that was one of the that was one of the major questions. So great question. So um, the software can be found on our website. It's downloadable. You just simply download the firmware. You load the firmware on your server. You maintain that server. For example, it's free of charge. There's no charges whatsoever. We continuously we advanced. Uh, the, the thing that we we're talking about at the summit, our partner summit, is that we continue to add features to Easy Master, and we continue to do that with no charge. So we're not charging you whatsoever. So long-winded answer to your question. So yeah, no charge. <laughs> no problem. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Uh, next question here is: um, Are there any plans to ever charge for licensing fees? Uh, another another excellent question. So let me just drive back to this particular slide. So we talked about these three semi -manage, management styles of Ingenius, right? And this falls in line with other vendors and things. You can manage the device individually. You can manage the device through a layer two switch. You can manage the device through Easy Master. All of these are subscription fee, uh, license free. There's no charges for the management features. Coming by the end of this year, we, we will be launching a new product, which will be um, basically it's Easy Master in the cloud. An Easy Master um, in the cloud will be a public service, and there will be uh, licensing fees tied to that management system. But currently, with the lineup now, we do not have uh, fees. So we will have a fourth management system, which will be tiered pricing. Uh, okay, so this is actually was on our um, roadmap, um, which I don't mind sharing today. Um, it will be a cloud version, which the idea is to have tiered pricing. One of those tiers, the, the, the primary tier will be free. And as you need more features and more monitoring tools, as you go up the line, there will be licensing fees applied to that. Now, when customers and or devices are being managed or they're trying to manage more devices, you're tying up more and more resources of the server that you're on. And so there's addition, there's cost to that. So our idea behind it is to become is to be be very aggressive in regards to the pricing model for that and to um, and to have a free service. And then as you go up the pricing, there will be licensing fees, but it will be aggressive. I know there was a, a change uh, just two week, two or three weeks ago where there's a vendor that's out there that was offering free management and now they've gone to, it's no longer free, the beginning of 2019, you're going to be charged uh, money for uh, managing those devices. What we're trying to do is still offer that free manageability, but we'll have a cloud version that will have licensing fees to it. The other thing I'd like to bring up really quick is Easy Master can reside on AWS or Amazon Web Services. So that's kind of a semi-public server that's still loaded by the customer themselves, but now it's on AWS. It's a really, really easy installation for a lot of our customers, but that is another avenue they could use for Easy Master. So if they don't want to put it on a virtual server that they own, they can put it on AWS. They still have administrative rights over it, but it's just being applied to AWS. Thank you, Brian. Next question. Um, we are the in-room APs. Do you have any in-wall APs? Oh, yes, actually, I guess uh, this, this particular device is our EWS 550. This is, this is actually in-wall access point. It uh, basically connects to a JBox. It has JBox um, uh, mounting uh, template, mounting hardware. So this would connect to a JBox. So any Ethernet drop, but you're basically turning into a Wi-Fi access point with this particular this particular device. In addition to that, is you can't see it in this picture, is that it has uh, four ports on the bottom, and it's basically acting as a switch also. So you're getting a dual band Wave 2 access point that connects to a JBox on the wall or within the wall, and it's acting as a four-port switch. Excellent. Thank you, Brian. Next question. Um, can we see the white paper studies on the application? Is there a link somewhere where we there, can get access? Yeah, there is. And we basically uh, call it um, 
case studies. So you would basically just go to ingeniustech.com and uh, you would just look up case studies and you'll find case studies by the vertical themselves. So if you want to look up case studies that were done within the hospitality industry, you just click in, uh, the industry hospitality and it will filter through the uh, case studies and give you all the case studies in hospitality. The other filter is you can filter it by indoor applications or outdoor applications. So there's that filter also. Excellent, thank you. Um, does Ingenius offer a plug and play product similar to the UBNT home mesh Wi-Fi system? And if not, is this something that we will see maybe down the line in the future? Um, I'm not sure if I understand uh, plug and play home system. Um, if they're talking about just the meshing system that goes within um, within a you know residential space, uh, we do have a dual band uh, device that is a meshing device that would you know go into a home. It comes in a three pack. It provides Wi-Fi within the home. Uh, that's a dual band app, uh, dual band solution. We will come out with a tri band solution. Uh, very similar to like the Orbi um, device that's out there. If, if that's a, what you're referencing, yes, we do. And we'll, we will come out with a newer model called the EMR5000, which is a tri-band, which the performance should be twice the amount of the original one that we, we uh, uh, launched previously. Excellent. Thank you, Brian. Last question here. Um, can you give us an overview on Ingenius's hours of support and how to reach them? Yes, the best way, so there's a couple ways. So for all of our users, just in general, it's either chat or email. For our partners, the partners that are working on larger applications that have deployed, that have um, um, deployed large uh, projects. They need to become, first you need to become a partner. And when you become a partner, you have a business development rep that is um, assigned to you. You also have an inside salesperson that is supported, uh, that supports that business development rep. Those two uh, representatives are your point of contact. And if you have technical support issues, you can take the route of chat or you can take the route of email but you also have the ability to go directly, you can call into that particular person and they will get you support to either our tier one support, tier, uh, tier two support, or our sales engineer support, or even engineering level uh, support. So if you're a partner, you have greater ability to get support. If you're a customer that's maybe made a purchase off of Newegg or maybe Amazon, for example, and you're putting it in your house, you're probably gonna end up with just email support or chat support. Thank you, Brian, so much for answering all those questions for us today. And thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar. If anyone has any further questions, please feel free to contact your sales rep or email us at sales at microcomtech.com. If you wish to view any of the products mentioned or shown today, please visit us at www.microcom.us. And remember, this webinar presentation has been recorded and will be uploaded to our Microcom YouTube channel so you can view it again. Again, thank you, Brian. Appreciate your time and your presentation today. We enjoyed it very much. Everybody have a fantastic day. Thank you. Thank you.